Another week, another list. I appreciate every single person being here and watching our show for over six years. And there was a channel that started around the time that we started up that was a very big inspiration to us and one that deserves a lot of credit, if not the most credit in the last six years, who have single-handedly brought more people into the enjoyment of the comic book industry, reading and collecting books. We lost an amazing creator this week, a talented writer, artist, and entertainer, Ed Piscor. And if you watch this video every week, you know that we sourced 10 books that we talk about from a larger list of 20. And on that list of 20 this week, uh, pretty much every major thing that Ed Piscor has done landed on that list. Uh, some of his major works include Red Room, X-Men Grand Design, and Hip Hop Family Tree, which are all very much worth reading. We want to give our condolences to his family, his friends, Jim Rugg, and encourage everybody to go enjoy his legacy and what he's left behind, whether it was his written or drawn works or his extensive YouTube channel that is still alive in trucking. They are still releasing content on there. They're taking things from their Patreon that was otherwise unseen and posting it there. And I hope that Jim Rugg keeps it going because their work in comics has not gone unnoticed and I still think there's a lot more to be done. Let's get into the list. All right, here we are with the trending 10 comics this week. We're here every single week. Uh, this week, I just I decided to do this from home. Tom smells. I'm not going to lie. Tom smells weird, so I decided to stay home this week. I'm sick, Ryan. I don't want you to catch COVID, so we're doing this remotely. Hit the like, slap that subscribe button, and you got to read more Transformers. Because at the list at number 10, we have Transformers number one, Energon Universe, Skybound from 2023. Damn it, Ryan, Optimus Prime takes on Megatron's Black Fusion Gun in issue number four. Everyone needs to read what's happening over at Skybound. Well, apparently you don't need to read it. You can just have Tom spoil what happens for you because he's just going to give you all the juicy bits right away. But regardless, issue one of this book is on the list here at number 10 this week. We're seeing $12 average sales, and we did just have a CGC 9.9 sell at the end of last month for $324, which is actually right at its 12 month average. We're seeing this book at a 9.8 hover between 50 and 80 bucks, which is quite strong for a cover A. An increase of 147% can only mean one thing. People are buying Transformers, they're liking Transformers, and also what's going on at CGC? Oh, Daniel Warren Johnson, the writer and artist of this book. Can you believe he did all six issues himself? Hot damn. Of course, you got to give a special shout out to Mike Spicer, the colorist who brings that artwork to stunning life. But yes, Daniel Warren Johnson is doing a CGC signing. However, the submission deadline is like today, right now, as we're recording this. So by the time anybody sees this video, you have missed out on your chance to send in anything by Daniel Warren Johnson to get signed. So hopefully you were more on top of the ball than we were. Did you watch X-Men 97, Ryan? Episode four was captivating. I did, actually. It was a lot more what I thought the show was going to be like. I don't want to spoil too much again because it's currently the coolest mo only Marvel thing coming out right now. But here on the list right now at number nine, we have X-Men issue number 11 from 1992. This is just a beautiful Jim Lee cover. It's iconic. It screams 90s X-Men. 90s nostalgia is what this episode four was all about. And it was actually a two-part narrative, one focusing on a very like arcade style mojo led villain storyline and then another with Storm that was sourced directly from the comic books. I especially love seeing all the video game X-Men arcade game type shout outs that happened in that first half. Jubilee and Sunspot getting sucked into a video game. It felt like very old school and retro. I really liked that episode a lot. And so did the comic fam. We are seeing a 177% increase in copies sold of this comic compared to last week. And again, on the larger trending 20 list on Key Collector, this is not the only X-Men 90s comic that's hitting the list. And I feel like that's going to happen every single week until this season of this show ends. Do yourself a solid and download the app we're talking about. It's called Key Collector Comics. You know this by now. Use code TOM101. You support the show, but you unlock a free two-week subscription of the app. We're like 98% of the app is completely free to use. And you're going to want to try it out no matter what, because you can catalog your comics, get suggested pricing, keep up on this rapidly moving marketplace, and so much more. And next on the list, we need an expert. We need someone to tell us why Dave Stevens' comic books are spiking so much now more than they have in the last decade. Swaggle Haas, make it happen. Thanks so much for having me, Tom. Well, coming in at the number eight spot on the list this week is actually DN Agents number 24 from 1985 by Eclipse Comics, the classic Dave Stevens good girl art cover, yet another book within his catalog that continues to get hot 
on the comic book market. This week alone, we saw average high raw sales at the $75 level with a few outliers hitting upwards of $91. And while there hasn't been a 9.8 sale in a few weeks, the most recent one that we did get set the all-time record for this book at $819, which effectively doubles the price of what this book was getting just a year ago. So why now? Why are we seeing so much movement for these books? Well, all the experts I talked to point to the Kickstarter that was about his documentary that came out last summer. Will these numbers sustain? I have to imagine that there will be a little bit of a pullback, but we'll have to see what happens in the future. Either way, it's very cool to see Dave Stevens on the list this week. Thanks for having me, Tom, and let's bring it back to you. Big shout out to Swagger Haas. Thank you for stepping in, for filling in on that number. That's a big blank spot for me. I'm glad that we have friends in this community who know their stuff. You guys need to follow Swagger Haas if you haven't already. Don't worry about trying to spell it. It's a hard word. We're just going to put a link up here somewhere. You need to follow him. He's got all kinds of really good market analysis commentary. If you're a fan of this channel, you're probably going to find something you like over there too. Thanks, Mikey. And let's move on to number seven on the list with Fantastic Four number 50. We got a brown cover to talk about. $850 average sales doesn't do you much good, but the CGC 5.0 sold for $238 this month. The CGC 8.0 sold for $1,049 this month and a 9.6 April 4th just sold for $19,800, which is higher than the recent 12-month average at that grade. Silver Surfer Galactus being on this list, and stay tuned, we got more to discuss, only means one thing. We're finally getting news about the first Marvel family entering the greater MCU at large. So I guess we should just walk people through it, right? On Valentine's Day, Marvel did this release of the Fantastic Four cast. I don't know where they just released. They announced all four members of the Fantastic Four, including Herbie. We don't know who's going to voice Herbie, but Herbie was also included in that picture. And since then, it's been kind of quiet on the Fantastic Four front over at Marvel until this week when they just randomly announced that not only did they cast uh, Shah Labal, who we all know as like Norrin Rad's love interest on the planet of Zen La, but they confirmed that uh, Shah Labal will be the silver surfer in this movie, which is raising several eyebrows. An increase of 333% for the Silver Surfer versus Galactus storyline. Classic Jack Kirby, second appearance of Galactus, third appearance of the Silver Surfer. This book is tough and high grade. Johnny Storm goes to college on this cover and in the book. I want to know what your thoughts are about Silver Surfer being cast because I have some more things to say about it, but I got to hear your thoughts first. He's got more things to say, and so do I. And we're going to keep going because we're going to talk about the issue previous to this right now. Number six on the list, Fantastic Four 49. This is the first full appearance of Galactus. This is the second part of this giant trilogy, probably the biggest trilogy in the Fantastic Four pantheon. Uh, we're seeing 157% increase in copies sold of this book compared to last week. And again, we got confirmation uh, that the Silver Surfer will be in this movie. That implies Galactus will feature in this movie in some capacity. So it's it's exciting. It's natural to kind of look at grabbing his first appearance as well in this issue. This book's hitting $4,000 average sales, but a 6.0 went for 1000 bucks. This is a pricey book. It's also my favorite of the three covers, you know, because you got Galactus and Silver Surfer in it. But... We do have multiple other reasons to be looking at these comic books besides the casting, don't we? Yeah, so again, like I was saying, it's been kind of quiet on the Fantastic Four front. And then this week, we got the news of the casting of the Silver Surfer. We also had Marvel Studios tweet out this image yesterday as we're recording this on 4-4. Um, it's a shot of Johnny Storm, Human Torch, just flying through the sky. And there's a link up there, marvel.com slash Fantastic Four. You head to that link, it takes you to a broken page featuring a 404 error with Herbie the robot on there. And if you look real close at Herbie, you can see he's got a QR code. You scan that QR code, it takes you to a completely different website where Marvel provides a free, free uh, five free digital copies of uh, various Fantastic Four books, which Tom can lay out for you right here. These are the books they want us to read to get ready for the big narrative, FF1, First appearance, naturally, but also we have 48, 49, and 50. The trifecta we're just talking about. This right here all but guarantees that they want us anticipating a Galactus narrative. Silver Surfer. All makes sense, but the fifth book is Fantastic Four Life Story. This right here is a by-era narrative that takes you through the life of the Fantastic Four, leading me to believe that the Fantastic Four have not existed in the 616, because wouldn't you think that the people of the 616 would remember 
Galactus showing up at some point? You would think, but apparently people in the MCU are kind of just overlooking the fact that there's a giant celestial poking out of the ocean in the middle of in the middle of the ocean for years now. So I guess they can over you know overlook Galactus. We've been talking about Javier Bardem and Antonio Banderas circling the role of Galactus for almost two years, I want to say at this point. So it, I'm looking forward to a very imminent casting announcement of somebody in that role here pretty soon. Which brings us to number five on the list. And if you want to support the show directly, we're going to send you comics every single month and it's dope. $34.99 gets you guaranteed exclusives, back issues, a chance at random keys and prints. We have going in one per box in the April mystery mail call. Two different Dan Panosian covers. The first, Jackpot and Black Hat number one. We have the Jackpot cover. Peter's hit it twice. And then also... Deadpool number one, Dan Panosian doing McFarlane justice with an ASM 300 homage. And you can go to comicton101.com to join the community. You support everything that we do. And speaking of Deadpool, that book just came out, and I hear it's fantastic. I'm still waiting on my copy. We have more Rob Liefeld goodness to discuss. Halfway through the list here at number five, we have Evangeline number one from 1995. This is a Rob Liefeld co-creation. We're seeing $4 average sales with a 182% increase in copies sold. Completely out of the blue, right, Tom? There's absolutely no reason this book is making the list this week? Well, it sells for $4 on average, which is basically cover price. And that's why we're seeing this giant increase of copies sold of 182%. Evangeline has not only been picked up for option status, it's not the first time that it's gotten this far. We saw this book optioned back in like 2013, again, just years later. And we're finding out now that not only Margot Robbie is attached with her production company, but Olivia Wilde is set to direct. And Olivia Wilde directed the movie Don't Worry Darling with Florence Pugh a couple years ago that I'm a huge fan of. That movie's great. It's definitely worth checking out. I keep bugging Tom to watch it. I don't know if he has it or not. But yeah, Margot Robbie's production company, Lucky Chap, this is like their first big thing after Barbie. So it's kind of exciting to see what they're working on next. We've also got uh, producer Simon Kinberg attached to this movie, and he's like kind of the brainchild of pretty much every single X-Men movie we've ever had. So I think the 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 creative the creatives attached to this movie are pretty well positioned to give us uh, something kind of badass. Evangeline is a fallen angel cast to earth to prevent the apocalypse with her super strength and her blood that she utilizes as a weapon. This is Rob Liefeld goodness, you know, action packed with a directorial team that I can't help but think could do something really special with this badass character. Which brings us to number four on the list with Heist Number One, a book I've never read, but I only had to hear what publisher created it. This right here is the closest thing to A24 in comics. We have Vault Comics, who I know you are a fan of. This book is Heist Number One from 2019. This is from Vault Comics. Like Tom said, I'm a pretty big fan of Vault Comics. They're uh, kind of a smaller publisher. They don't put out a whole lot of books at once, I guess, but the, the stuff I've read from Vault has been really good, and, and this book is now on my radar because it was just optioned this week for a uh, for a movie. This book is hitting $8 average sales. We don't have any CGC to report on because people weren't specking on this book. A thousand, one hundred percent increase in copies sold shows that that option status moved the needle this week, and when you read the synopsis, I can't help but get excited. You know, I love some sci-fi, Ryan. This book is called Heist. It takes place on a planet called Heist, which is a prison planet. I guess all of the galaxy's prisoners get shoved into one place uh, where nothing bad could probably happen. It doesn't seem like there's any red flags or anything that could go wrong with that sort of setup. So this is one I want to track down and check out. I want to give a shout out to a bunch of vault comics that I love and recommend because I personally read them, unlike Heist, of course. Uh, shout out to Barbaric, The Autumnal, which is as close as I've seen a comic get to Hereditary, which is like Tom and I's favorite movie. Go read The Autumnal. Uh, go read The Rush. And After End was really cool. The Nasty just finished wrapping up. Mindset was one of my favorite books last year. And Heart Eyes is a, a freaky kaiju apocalypse book like nothing you'll ever read. Which brings us to number three on the list with probably the biggest release all in one week of the year. Geiger, 80 page giant, issue number one. Jeff John's goodness hitting $8 average sales and 400% increase in copies sold because of the debut of so many other books that are part of this universe but it's like more than one universe i've been a big fan of uh jeff johns clearly uh for quite a while here i've actually got geiger right here it's from 2021 this is the first trade geiger's been a character for quite a while after this uh six issue storyline wrapped up this 80 page giant one shot here came out which sort of set up a lot of the future storylines that would eventually grow into uh, what we saw this week with the uh what's being called ghost machine day it was new comic book day this week because um all three of the uh the big 
Ghost Machine titles all came out on the same day this week. That's a huge statement. Uh, Geiger number one, Red Code number one, and Rook Exodus number one all came out this week. They all blew off the doors. Everyone was crazy about it. Uh, I've seen a lot of love for Rook Exodus, especially. But Red Code's first appearance was here in the Geiger 80 page giant. And that's why we're talking about it today. Yeah, keep an eye out for the variant that features Red Coat on it front and center. And we didn't get our lunar shipment. I have not read these books yet, but I know that they're on their way. And I'm very excited. If you have gotten your book, let us know what you thought about it in the comment section below, but keep it spoiler free. It's also worth mentioning there's probably a lot of other people that haven't been able to secure their copies yet. So we may be seeing Geiger on the list sometime soon. Either way, you need to read it. Which brings us to number two on the list. Have you hit the like and subscribe yet? Damn it! We have Silver Surfer number one. We're taking it to 1968 with the first origin for sure, but like we have the first appearance of Shalabal in this book. And now we know Shalabal is going to be one of the Heralds of Galactus taking on that Silver Surfer burden. And people are freaking out, Ryan. And I think it's premature. Yeah, I'm guilty of this too. I remember, uh, what, like... 16 years ago or something at this point when they're like, Heath Ledger is going to play the Joker in the new Batman movie. And I'm like, oh, that's the cowboy guy from that one movie. I don't like this. That's the that's bad. That's not going to be cool. What a lame idea this is. I'm going to post about it loudly on the Internet. And then, of course, that movie came out and we all we know how that went. So I've learned a long time ago to just stop complaining about casting picks. But the more evidence comes out about this movie and the multiversal kind of nature of that it will probably have. I think there's something more going on here than we might realize at first. An increase of 1,067% in copies sold for Silver Surfer 1. We're seeing $1.8,000 average sales. Someone grabbed a 9.0 for $38.40 this past week. And I can't help but think that this casting is good news for Norn Rad. Bear with me. Because it tells me that what's more likely happening is that they we're going to get more than one Silver Surfer. They're not just going to not cast Norn Rad. That would be my bet. And it would make sense to me that they would cast the female Herald before we get Norrin's casting. Yeah, Tom pointed this out to me before the show, and it was a very good point. Like, if they announced that they've cast Norrin Rad, Silver Surfer, boom, 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 the big classic one everybody's excited for, and then they announced that we've cast, we've cast Shalabal as well, it's, it's kind of, it's not going to be as exciting, or it's not going to make as big of a splash as we are experiencing right now with a, a little bit of fan outrage over this surprise casting. So I think Tom's probably onto something. Uh, there's even another wrinkle to this story with um, Atlanta actor Lakeith Stanfield, probably my favorite character from that show. Go check out Atlanta if you haven't already, by the way. He posted on Instagram like the day that we saw the uh, the casting of Julia Garner as Silver Surfer. He posted on Instagram, thought it was going to be me. And he took it down quickly. Why would he do that? It tells me that they were probably actively casting for this character. I don't think this is bad news. I think what we just found out is that not only are we going to get Galactus and that fantastic Kirby narrative, no pun, the first Marvel family, and during an era where they're already famous. So we're not going to get a retread of an origin story we've seen multiple times. No, they're going to be famous in their own right, probably in a different multiverse. So it makes sense with the greater 616 having them be absent. And not only are we going to get Silver Surfer, we're going to get two. Yeah, Julia Garner was on Ozark on Netflix a few years ago. I never got around to watching Ozark, but now I think it's it's jumped up to the front of my list here. And if Lakeith Stanfield is really cast as Norrin Rad, just kind of waiting in the wings, I'm even more excited because, again, I'm a huge fan of that guy, and I think he would really pull off Silver Surfer quite well. Hit that like, slap the subscribe, follow Swagahoss, he's a homie. And the number one book only further proves my point because... Yes, there's probably a lot of people out there who are super upset, but others are specking, which is why I think this next book is on the list. Earth X number 12. This is when Shalabal becomes the Silver Surfer. And in this run, we still have Norn Rad Silver Surfer. This is another one that I'm not as familiar with. I need to go track down Earth X and read it because this is this is a really cool like Alex Ross centric book, right? There's some really good covers in here. According to what I was able to find, there's only two slabs of this book on the CGC census as well. Two 9.8s and that's it. We're seeing $40 average sales across the board for like raw, raw copies of this book, which is probably the best way to go track this down. I, I don't think you want to be one of the people who overpays for one of those two slabs that exist already. Go track it down. We're seeing a 1,380% increase in copies sold on this book because it is the first time that Shalabal becomes Silver Surfer. That right there is a key moment that we're expecting to experience on the big screen. And the way that this comic originally was created 
also was fascinating because it was kind of like an offshoot through Wizard Magazine, Alex Ross writing a dystopian future that took on so much excitement that he was granted like a director's cut and then a full volume to be written and drawn by the man himself. So yeah, clearly this is kind of like a like a hidden gem almost in the Marvel you know history backlog. I, I need to track it down. I want to read it, uh, especially if this book has some cool Alex Ross Silver Surfer stuff, which uh, I think is one of the he should be only allowed to draw Silver Surfer. That should be like a lock. And we call like Congress or something and have them say like Alex Ross is only allowed to do Silver Surfer and maybe Human Torch artwork from now on and nobody else ever or else. Let us know what you think about all of this and what Ryan just said. I think it's blasphemy, but I want to know your thoughts. Make sure to go and follow Cartoonist Kayfabe. Experience the legacy that has not just been left behind, but is still actively being added to and created. We appreciate your time today. As always. Geek responsible. Enough said. <laughs>